what we're going to be looking at is some introduction to MLPerf inference, noteworthy results that we accomplished, parameters that we tuned for inference workloads, and further steps for anyone interested to explore. Okay, what is MLPerf inference? MLPerf inference is a benchmarking suite that measures the performance of machine learning workloads. It focuses on most important aspects of machine learning lifecycle, such as training and inference. So what is MLPerf training trying to assess? The training is trying to assess how fast a system can train machine learning models, whereas MLPerf inference is trying to assess how fast a system can perform machine learning inference by using a trained model at, you know, in different uh, deployment scenarios. We'll be talking about these deployment scenarios in, in the next slides. So MLPerf provides a, a reference implementation. Uh, that's uh, the link for which is the same here. Uh, this, this is the, the working repository where MLPerf actually talks about some, some decision making, uh, some, some reasons why certain choices were made and things of that nature. There are multiple benchmarks, as you can see. It actually spans across different areas and tasks, from vision to commerce, as far as areas are concerned, and image classification to recommendation are concerned. There are different models, and different benchmarks have different quality expectations. Um, so some benchmarks, such as ResNet 50, they have 99% expectation whereas uh, other benchmarks expect 99.9% of the, the actual value. So in other words, some benchmarks have, have higher tolerance, whereas some other benchmarks, such as uh, 3D Unit or, or BERT or DLRM, have lower tolerance in relation to 99% uh, benchmarks. Okay. I also want you to take a look at the latency constraint. Different benchmarks have different latency constraints. So in the data center suite, we have two scenarios. The first one is server scenario. The second one is offline scenario. What is the server scenario? Well, server scenario represents online applications where the query arrival is random and latency is important. Uh, for this scenario, Queries have one sample each in accordance with a Poisson distribution. The system under test responds to each query within a benchmark specific latency bound that varies from 15 to 1000 milliseconds. So as we saw, different benchmarks have different latency constraints and whichever benchmark we are running, it has to match the latency constraint for it to be considered as a valid run under you know, server scenario. Okay, uh, the server scenario's performance metric is queries per second, QPS, that is achievable while meeting the accuracy requirements. Okay, let's look at offline scenario. In the offline scenario, basically it, it is the, it's just as good as a batch processing uh, setting where all the data is immediately available and latency is unconstrained. Uh, for this scenario, the data is sent in a single query uh, that includes all the input data to be processed. And the system is actually free to process the input data in any order. Uh, the metric that we use to measure the performance for offline scenario is uh, throughput. That is basically samples per second. Okay, Dif and by the way, different benchmarks have different samples different kinds of samples, if you will. Let us look at the non-data center suite. We have offline, single stream, and multi-stream. Single stream actually represents, um, you know, a case where one inference query stream with, with a sample size of one. It has one sample, one query. The way it works is we inject single query into the inference system when the query is complete, we record the completion time and inject the next query. Uh, the metric that we use to assess its performance is the 90th percentile measured latency. 
In the multi-stream scenario setting, what happens is we're trying to assess how many concurrent streams can the system handle. So it represents applications with a stream of queries, but each query comprises of multiple inferences. Uh, the performance metric for multi-stream scenario is, um, is the number of streams that the system supports while meeting the uh, accuracy requirements. Okay, so let us look at some results that we accomplished with MLPerf inference version 0.7. Uh, we took the first part in total number of data center submissions in closed division. Dell EMC took the first part in performance per GPU with A100 PCIe on DLRM 99% accuracy server scenario. The first part Again, with A100 PCIe DLRM 99.9% .9 accuracy server scenario. The first part with A100 PCIe ResNet 50 server scenario. The first part with uh, T4 on BERT server scenario. Um, the first part with BERT 99 offline scenario. First part on T4 RNNT server scenario. First part per GPU again, with T4 on SSD large server scenario, first part in T4 per, you know, per GPU, T4 on 3D unit, uh, you know, offline scenario. The second and third spot in performance per GPU with T4 on DLRM 99 offline scenario. First part in performance with RTX systems, uh, 8,000 and 6,000 systems, and we took the first part there with uh, 72 RTX results. Okay, so what are some, some general optimization techniques that as a customer you can use? Well, the first thing you can do is set a transparent huge pages to always. The way THP reduces, uh, improves performance is through reducing the overhead of transition leukocyte buffer. Uh, you can turn off ECC. ECC is error correcting code and on GPUs it's a feature that um, you know that uses extra bits to store error information. So turning that off can also help um, performance gains by a small margin. Okay, so what are some parameters that we explored for better performance? Target QPS, GPU copy streams, GPU inference streams, GPU batch size, G, uh, DQ timeout microseconds, um, other benchmark specific arguments like uh, num you know number of GPU bundles, etc. Well, these arguments are the ones that is required to to explore um, if you want to see how you can accomplish higher performance. These parameters are actually uh, you know, publicly available through NVIDIA's performance guide. Uh, we've already done the heavy lifting of finding the most optimal parameters for your system. And to find the most optimal parameters, you can take a look at the config.json file, uh, the first link that we are looking at. And this link contains different configurations for different systems under different scenarios for different benchmarks. You can also take a look at NVIDIA's performance tuning guide uh, to see how you can improve performance. And in that tuning guide, they also talk about how you can optimize for different, different scenarios, um, you know, including the ones that we mentioned, uh, offline, single stream, multi-stream, and server scenarios. But if you already have a system that we used in the benchmark, then you don't have to really go through all the extra work of finding all these parameters. We already have, like I said, the uh, the the most, or, or 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 should I say, almost the most optimal parameters in in the in the configs. Um, the first link that we can see here. Okay, so we we've, we've taken a look at what MLPerf is and what what it can accomplish and and why why it is important and all that good stuff but if if as a customer you're interested what can you do to take further steps well we are actually providing a blog uh, that describes basic introduction to mlperf this blog talks about 
you know, introduction to MLperf, uh, some results that we accomplished on our servers, uh, of course, with NVIDIA GPUs. Um, and, you know, this, this uh, whole blog is, is just a quick introduction for all the rules, uh, some, some settings and, and, and the systems that we used for the benchmark. The second blog talks about how you can run step-by-step -step MLperf inference. So in this blog, if you have a, a Dell system that is not already used in the MLperf inference benchmark, this blog talks about how you can actually use a system that uh, you can, you know, that, that was not used in the benchmark, but still you can run the benchmark yourself by adding that new config into the list of available configs and to sort of run uh, your required benchmark uh, rather than running all the benchmarks. So say for instance, you just wanted to run DLRM benchmark, then this blog has a modularized section that talks about just running DLRM benchmark. So, uh, you know, pl please feel free to take a look at these two blogs. And, you know, we have other blogs that relate to MLperf uh, version 0 0.7 uh, that are coming out soon, such as, you know, sizing guidance um, and things of that kind, where, you know, it talks a lot about uh, some optimal results that we accomplished and how and what did we do to accomplish them and those uh, details. Um, okay, so if you want to just get started with MLPerf, if, you are, if you're just really new to MLPerf, then you can take a look at these um, MLPerf. You can start by looking at some reference results that were published uh, for MLPerf inference. Um, the first link is the reference results. Uh, the second link is the code base uh, to our repo. In fact, this code base it contains all the uh, repos, all the code bases that we used, uh, all the submitters that were in MLperf inference uh, version 0 0.7, and you know how how they can actually reproduce the results. You know, you can go to Dell EMC's uh, uh, you know uh, folder and and try to reproduce the results. Uh, again, going back to the second blog, it talks about the whole process there. Uh, but, you know, um, uh, github.com forward slash mlperf inference results v0.7 is where you would go to take a look at the code base that was uh, in the benchmark. Okay, so the third link here links to mlperf inference paper where in that paper they talk about the, 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 the reasons why certain decisions w were made and why were they made uh, and, you know, stuff of that kind. Um, you know, also challenges in implementing different deployment scenarios and why are even those deployment scenarios important. Basically, this paper serves as a really quick primer for, um, for running MLperf inference. Okay, with that being said, I would really like to invite you to contact us if you need more information or more help um, for running your benchmark. You know, if, if you're running on a uh, Dell EMC server, we'd be more than happy to help you run inference, uh, MLperf inference benchmark and stuff of that kind, and also help you to, uh, to performance tune um, or basically use the configuration files that we already have and try to, to see how you can actually just basically run this benchmark if you're interested. Um, with that being said, I'd like to thank you so much for watching this video. And, uh, you know, thanks a lot for taking the time to view this video. I appreciate it. Have a good one.